All right, so the next important concept that we're going to introduce in the context of our work on MP1 and to help us wrap up is this idea of a callback. And this is a new concept for us. This is not something that we've introduced you to so far. And one of the reasons is it's really associated with certain styles of programming, and particularly with this idea of UI programming. And this also connects us to the Android framework, which we talked about just a minute ago. Okay, so what is a callback? Well, here's the idea. Your app, because it interacts with the user, needs to react to things that the user does. So for example, one of the things we're going to work on next is when the user enters text into the search bar that's visible, your app is supposed to respond to that happening by doing something, in this case by updating the list of restaurants that's shown in the UI. Here's the question. How do you know when that happens? How do you know, you know, you might think about a couple of things. First thing you have to know is when is the user interacting with the search bar? When does that text change? And then you need a way for your app to do something in response. And so, you know, up to this point in the semester, we haven't talked a lot about when your code runs. Like, why does code run? Like, why does a particular method run at a particular time? Uh, when I'm, I'm looking right now at on create, which is part of my main activity, we talked a little bit about how the fact that on create is called by the Android platform when this activity is created, like when it's in the process of being shown to the user. So, but what we're talking about now is our, our methods that are known as callback functions. And the, the, the idea of a callback, I want to connect that to the idea of a phone call because I think it's a useful, uh, a useful way to think about it. So one thing you could do, you know, sometimes uh, maybe you've called a company to get some help with something. And, you know, you're sitting there on hold for long periods of time and, and you're kind of wasting time as part of that process. But sometimes now they'll offer you the option to be called back when it's your turn. And callback methods work in a similar fashion. What we do is I'm going to show you in the code. We're going to tell the Android platform when the user interacts with the search bar, call this method. And then we're going to write code in that method to handle that particular event. So the method that we are going to write is known as a callback function or a callback method. And there's a lot of neat pieces of things that we've already seen here. So for example, there's interfaces involved because there's a contract between the code that's calling our method, which is the Android platform, and the object that provides the methods. Um, okay, so, so let's make this a little bit more concrete. Let's look at a couple of callback methods. So in main activity, you might have noticed as you were looking through the code earlier on when you were getting comfortable with the starter code, there are these three methods at the bottom that say called when, called when, called when. And then it describes kind of when this method is called. These three methods are callback functions. They are called by the Android platform or by library code that we use when specific things happen. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the cases right now when those methods are called. So the first thing when you have a callback method is you have to, to register it typically. You have to tell someone, in this case the Android platform, I want these methods called. So where does this happen here? Um, if you look uh, right, there, there's, there's two sets of callbacks. There's one set of callbacks here. Uh, on query text submit and on query text changed that are associated with the search bar. And then there's a third callback called on click that's associated with the list of restaurants. So on click is called when someone clicks on one of the lists of restaurants. And we're going to handle that one later and react to it in a cool way as part of MP2. But for MP1, what we need to work on is the search bar because we've got everything working to this point where we're kind of like almost ready to actually do some work on our uh, our search function works, the list view is sorted properly, a lot of things are good to go, but what we need is we need that search bar to work. We need it to narrow down the list of restaurants appropriately based on the user's query. And so we need to work with that a little bit and understanding callbacks is really important to be able to do that. We're going to see callbacks later used in a different context when we talk about network programming as part of a, a later checkpoint. Um, Okay, so, so let's see these in action. First of all, I promised that I would show you where we're actually registering those callbacks, and that's right here. So you see that it says set on query text listener, and then it passes this, this object. So this object is that activity, and the reason that I can pass it here to this particular method is because I've implemented this search view on query text listener 
uh, text listener interface. Let's say I remove this interface from my class declaration. So you're going to see a couple of errors pop up. The first error says that I can no longer register this object because I haven't declared that I implement the right callback methods. This is how interfaces are used as part of this process. So by implementing the interface, I tell the Android platform, I've got the right methods uh, ready that can be called now by this particular component, right? So when the search text changes, I'm ready to receive the responses. You'll also see down here that these override annotations are now flagged because they're not, these are the two uh, methods that this interface uh, requires that I implement. Um, all right, so I'm going to put that back. You'll see these errors will go away. Okay, good. So now let's put, now let's do some logging. I just want to see this in action. So I'm going to run the app, uh, go here. I'm, I'm going to, well, let's, let's put some logging in here first before we run the app. It takes a minute. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say log dot uh, I, and I'll use that tag. I need to import my logging uh, method. Uh, and I'll just put a method that says on query text change. Just want to see that this was called. Um, and then down here in on query text submit. Now we're not going to use this method. This is uh, associated with somebody submitting, like, like hitting a, a submit button on query text submit. And I'm not even sure this is fire, but maybe it is. We'll find out. All right. So let's run our run the app on our emulator. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to interact with that search component and we're going to see that these methods get called. And then we'll do a couple of things just to illustrate this whole callback programming pattern. Like we'll remove the line of code that registers the callbacks. And you'll see that at that point, we don't see these methods called anymore because we haven't told Android, uh, we haven't told Android, hey, I want to be notified when the text in the query, uh, in the query search bar changes. The, the, the query in the search bar changes is the right way to, to say it although I'm finding new ways to say it uh, as I continue to try to say it. All right, so um, we're launching the activity. Okay, this is good. I'm gonna open up my Logcat tab so I can uh, get a sense of what's going on. I'll use the main activity tab to uh, tag uh, filter to narrow things down. I've got verbose set, so I should see those info tags good. Uh, okay, so things are still loading up. Okay, now I'm good. And now let's, uh, let's try this, right? So uh, I don't know why this isn't filtering. Let's see, main activity uh, oh I think it's just because main activity is used a lot um, maybe if I don't hit regex yeah, okay that's okay uh, this will work now I should slow down okay so let's put some uh, text in here uh, right and you see every time I type into the search bar there's this callback method that's run on query text changed and if I hit uh, let's see if I hit return Okay, now it says on query text submit. So if I hit return, there's this submit action. Now, like I said, we're not going to worry about the submit action. We're going to update the list as the user types. Another search bar, maybe if it was more expensive to update the list, might say, okay, well, I'm only going to wait till the user hits return or something like that. Uh, we're not going to do that. You also see that if I hit this uh, clear button, then there's an on query text change. All right, so let's remove this. Uh, and let's focus on on query text change. Now, like I said, it's important that we register uh, this for uh, to receive the callback. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove this line. I'll rerun my app. And what we're going to see now is that we don't see these log messages because the app is no longer registered to receive this callback. And as a result, Android says, okay, well, I don't know. There's a search bar there, but you didn't tell me to tell you when it changes. And so I guess you're going to handle that some other way. Um, and so let's see here. So we do, um, right. You see now as I'm changing things, uh, you know, nothing is, uh, I don't, I'm not getting these events. Okay. So let's put that back. And now the next thing I want to point out is, you know, like we said about the Android platform, its job is to be useful. And so what's useful information that I would need to know when the query changes in the text bar, I probably want to know what the query is, like what the contents of that search bar are at that point. And if you look here, in fact, on query text change, this callback method receives as a parameter the string that's in the, the search bar, right? And so if I put that here, uh, we're going to see now um, that when I rerun this, what's going to happen is that uh, I'm going to get information about the text that the user has entered, which is important because that's what I want to respond to, right? This is a great example of how the platform enables us to write really cool apps. So I don't have to write the code to render the search bar. I don't have to write the code to monitor its contents or whatever. All I have to do is 
let me go over here again and put in something, right? All I have to do is essentially tell Android when, oh, sorry, this ended up in here. TTT, that's not gonna be very helpful. Um, when this text change changes, what should I do? Okay, and so, and, and, and let's think a little bit about why I would have to do this. So you might think about like, how, how would I do this any other way, right? I, when you write code like this, you fundamentally don't know when the user is going to interact with your app. And so there's no way to write a normal method and kind of have it wait for something to happen because you don't know when it's gonna happen. And so the callback programming pattern allows you, rather than to do that, to basically tell Android, hey, when the user changes the text, tell me. I want to be notified, right? I want to be able to respond to that. And then you write the code in this method that, that responds in an appropriate way, which is the next step to complete for MP1 and the last portion of MP1. Uh, let me show you the other callback method just before we finish. It's another good example here. So the, the list library that we're using to render the list also um, has a listener that I can register. And let me see if I can actually not do that. Uh, no, it looks like I have to set a listener. Okay, so there's no, well, let's see here. Um, yeah, I don't think I can, I can do this in the same way because it's required when I actually create the adapter. So if I, if I get rid of that, the whole list is gonna be gone. But I will point out here that there is this on click method. And let's put some logging in here too, just for fun. So we'll say live.tag, um, and we'll put a, you know, on clicked, and what's passed on clicked, which is interesting, is a restaurant. So I actually now have full access to all the information in my restaurant model when this is clicked. And so, for example, I'll uh, also uh, do let's see, just get like the, the name of the restaurant, right? I'll, I'll, I'll log that as well, and you'll see that when I click on restaurants in the list, I'm going to uh, see their. Uh, their name logged, right? Because I'm getting a different callback from a different piece of code, but it works the same way. I don't know when the user is going to click on things, but what I can do is I can tell the list library, right? When the user clicks on something, I want to respond. And what we'll do as part of a later checkpoint is we'll actually add some code here to have the app react in a, in a useful way. Okay, so this callback programming pattern, super important to building uh, interactive applications and also working with some other um, parts of the application that we'll talk about later. So we're gonna come back and talk about callbacks. If you didn't understand all this on the first try, that's okay. I mean, this is a pretty important video, so you might wanna watch it more than once. Uh, we'll come back to this idea uh, when we talk about network programming later and when we continue to work on the UI in, in future parts of the MP. Um, but you know, this, this idea of rather than running a method and, and causing something to happen, registering a method to run when something happens and then being able to do things, right? Respond to that event, right? The event being the user clicked on something, the event being the user interacted with the UI. This is a programming pattern that's very, very common in UI applications mainly because the user's behavior is really unpredictable. We don't know when the user is gonna click on something, and so it's hard to wait for it. But instead what we do is we tell Android, when this happens, notify me using this callback mechanism, and we register ourselves using an interface, and so it brings together uh, some of the concepts that we've learned about up till this point in the semester.